Hey guys, it's Steve Crane, and in this video I'm going to show you hot backup and recovery with Oracle XC. Uh, the basic theory behind hot backup and recovery is the database can remain open and used by users uh, while things are going on. So when I take a hot backup, I don't have to shut down the database as I had to do with the cold backup option we looked at in a different video. The database can be running, it can be accepting transactions. I run a hot backup script and Oracle does some special things to copy over data files and make a backup set of the data currently in the database while user transactions are going on. What's nice about hot backup is unlike a cold backup where you basically take a snapshot of a point in time and then when you have to restore, you restore to that point in time. Hot backup can take a combination of your latest backup file and any, and any archive transaction logs that you've created since making that backup file. And it can apply the two together and it can get you up to the moment of failure. Uh, so if you have you know, a database that's recording business transactions and you can't really afford to lose any of those, it might be customer sales or something like that, you can use the hot backup option to keep your database continually running. And if there is a failure and if you set things up correctly, you can actually restore up until the point in time of the failure. So it's a nice option to uh, be able to have, especially for a production system accepting a lot of transactions. So what it's gonna do at a disk level is it's gonna take, uh, we had looked at these in the previous video, video, but it's gonna take a backup set, which is basically a backup of data files that's gonna get created in this directory and it's going to apply our archive logs, transaction logs that uh, we may have created in the past. That they're none in this area right now. I'll show you actually creating some uh, as as we go through the example here. But it's going to apply the archive transaction logs to the latest copy of the data files and bring the database up to its current state. So it's kind of a, a nice process to go through, as I said, for a highly available system. What I want to do to make this work, I'm going to connect system user as this is DBA role. I'm going to need that to shut down and back up the database. I am now connected. To make the database do a hot backup, I need to have it in what's called archive log mode. I'm going to check to see the current log mode I'm in. Archive log list is one way to do it. I see I'm in no archive mode. I can also do select log underscore mode from the dollar database to basically see the same thing. I'm in no archive log mode. So I want to put this database in so-called archive log mode. And again, the meaning of that is it's going to, when it finishes writing a transaction log, it's going to copy a version of that transaction log over to an archival area for me. To do that, I shut down the database, shut down immediate. I start up in mount mode. Mount means that I create the instance, the memory structures and background processes of Oracle, and then I attach those to data files, but I don't actually open the data files for use. It's kind of right before the database will be available for users to use it. Okay. Alter database. Archive log. Database is altered. Now I alter database, open. Database is now open for business. If I were to go back and select log mode, now I see that I'm in archive log mode, whereas I was in no archive log mode before. Something I did in a previous video, and I'll show you that again, is I created a table space called gonna lose it that I use for backup and recovery scenarios. And the data file for it is on this E drive out here. On my system right now, this E drive is a removable disk. And you can see the gonna lose it.dbf table space is sitting out there. To simulate media failure, I'm just gonna yank this guy out of the USB drive on my system. And then we'll have the equivalent of a losing a disk volume, the sort of thing you might experience when you have a production database failure. But so that's the table space where I'm gonna do some, some things. I'll take the code over here. And I'm I've already created this table space. That's just here for an example. So I'm gonna create a table called hot backup test got one column in there, I'm going to call it a dummy column. And 
I'm going to make it in this table space, going to lose it. So now I have a table created in that table space, going to lose it. I'm going to do something here called set auto commit on. As I've covered in the past, this basically means any change that I make, any uh, insert statement and such, is going to just become permanent and immediate without me having to go through a separate commit step for it. So when I set auto commit on, any insert, update, etc. commands that I might run are just going to become uh, immediately part of the public record of the database, if you will. So I'm going to insert a record into this table. And it's going to document how things were before I took my hot backup. And the commit happened automatically. If I were to do select star from hot backup test right now, I would see this record in there. Okay, so what I'm going to actually do is take the hot backup, go to the Oracle XE menu, and I'm going to do backup database. You're going to see list of commands come through. It's talking to the RMAN system, taking a backup of the database. You can see it's listing a certain table spaces in here, etc. It's going through and doing my hot backup. One of the table spaces being back up is my gonna lose it table space that contains the table I just created. On, going on. And the database was available to users throughout this time. Very good. The hot backup is complete. Boom. Users were able to ac access the database while that was going on. Be able to run transactions and such if they wanted to. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to do some log switches. Ordinarily log switches, log, transaction logs would fill up because of a lot of database activity and then they would roll over. What I'm going to do is kind of force or simulate uh, these log switches. I'm going to run command to document that this is something that happened before the first log switch. I'm going to do an alter system switch log file. And what that had happened is it forced me to jump over. Uh, here we're looking at my archive logs. I see I have ones for 7.11, which is the current date. I have some logs switching over here. If I run another transaction, And I run another ultra system switch log file. She get another archive log showing up in this guy. There we go. We got a fourth one. I just created at 3.15 a.m. I'm going to run another record in the database. Another log file switch. System gets altered. And there, we get another archive log file created. And just for yucks, we're going to do one more. Switch the log file. So you can see I have plenty of records in my table, plenty of log files that have rotated over and are now in so called archive status. Just for Confirmation, I'm going to do select star from hot backup test just so I can see what's in there. And see, those are the entries that I've made in hot backup test. Now I'm going to do something awful. I'm going to yank my removable drive that contains my going to lose the table space right out of there. I pull it out. Now Oracle basically loses this table space. It's like having a media failure for Oracle. Let's see what happens. If I try to select star from hot backup test, it already has some information cached in memory. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shut this guy down. When I shut it down, Oracle should balk and say, hey, I'm looking to clean up some data files and this guy isn't there. Oh, and you can see the table space in this particular file going to lose it. It can't find it anymore. Oh no, what will I do? 
To get Oracle to come down all the way, I'm going to do a shutdown abort. It basically says Oracle come down and close no matter what. The Oracle instance is shut down. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug this uh, table space back in. Okay. That was just a drive at work. Okay. And plug this table space, this uh, disk back in. And I'm going to get rid of going to lose it.dbf. I'll just drag it over to my desktop just for safekeeping. Oracle has no idea about that copy. I'm just going to delete this guy altogether. Okay, now it's totally gone. I'm going to start Oracle up again. And it should complain about this missing file. Oh no. What will I do? I'm going to do a restore. Go to this menu option, restore database. This operation will shut down and restore. Are you sure? Yes, I am. Shutting things down. It's running through a so called RMAN script to copy in the latest backup set and fix up the database. And it's also going to apply those transaction logs that I've archived. Give it a second to think about it. Okay, so it says my restoration was successful. Press any key to continue. Just for fun, look out here and see what's happening on that e-disk. Lo and behold, the gonna lose it table space that I had gotten rid of is back. You can see the modified time is 3.20 a.m., same time as my system clock. I'm gonna exit out of here and come back in. That's often SQL Plus Tools probably lost its connection to uh, database connect system at sysdba sysdba connected now so I'm going to do select star from hot backup test we'll see what I get here and you can see all the records have come back up until the point of failure. And again, what's interesting about that is in this backup set I here created here for the 11th, you'll see that that was some time ago. The backup set only contained the records up until before hot backup here. That was right after I inserted this record, I took my hot backup. All these log switch records were after these files were created. To get those log switch records, I had to go into here in the archive logs and play those forward. And you can see the timing of those guys as well. So Oracle went through, brought in the backup set, and then it played through all those archive transaction logs until it brought the database up to its current state. The nice thing about the backup again was at no point in the backup process did the database have to be closed. It was open for business the entire time. The only time that we actually had to close the database is when we had the media failure and we had to do our recovery. So that's an example of hot backup and recovery using Oracle XC. And uh, a little bit later on in some other videos, we'll look at some different, more complicated recovery scenarios, or at least uh, more specialized recovery scenarios. Thanks a lot, guys.